have you ever wondered why you're here? Those are the words that I said to my mom as we were walking to the store one day. It was my mom and dad, my brother. Have you ever wondered why you're here? My dad first said, yeah, I know why exactly why we're going to the store. He, he talked about going to the store. And my brother kind of ignored me. And my mom, in that moment, my mom, what she did for me is say just one word that opened up the world to me. In that moment, she said, yes. Yes. A single word changed the rest of my life. That single word, yes, transformed me from a little kid that's trying to figure out why am I here in the middle of Spanish hall? I'm trying to figure out what is meant for me at a time and a place in the 80s when it was the height of the crack epidemic. You see, I didn't even have money for shoes. I had holes in shoes, didn't own a pair of jeans until I was in high school. And I was trying to figure out why. Why am I going through what I'm going through in this world as a kid? I'm just a kid. I'm trying to figure it out. And so I blurted out the words. Have you ever wondered why you're here? And like most of our moms would do, like a Latina would do, she said the words that I needed to hear in that moment. And although it was a single word, that one word transformed the rest of my life, she made me believe in the impossible things. She made me believe that I could do anything in that single word. Yes, she let me know that it's okay to wonder. It is okay to believe. My name is Daniel Rivera, I'm the CEO of Alpha. And what I wanna do for the next few minutes is take you through a bit of a journey, but more importantly, what I want you to think about is your journey, your story, the power of your origin story and who you are and at a time and a place where the Latino community has the opportunity to make a difference in the big magical way. You see, cause I still believe that we have a time and a community that is needed more than ever. One of the things that I consistently say is equity of opportunity is not the same as equity of responsibility. With increased ability comes increased responsibility. And you see, we as a community have an increased responsibility to make sure that we are giving back at a time when the world needs it more than ever before. In going to Rutgers, I studied chemical engineering. And when I graduated, when I graduated, you see, a lot of people were getting other gifts. A lot of people were getting things that I thought were so important. They were getting cars. They were getting all kinds of stuff that I was like, man, I wish I was getting that. And that is not what I got. What I got was something different, something so much more important. I didn't realize the importance of what I was getting in that moment. It was a hand-drawn picture from my dad inside of a plaque. And I'm sure many of you have seen this picture before. It wasn't original art, but it was the art that my dad knew I needed in that moment. It's a picture of a pelican with a frog in its mouth. And that frog is, is hanging on for dear life. It's hanging on for dear life. And it says, never, ever give up. What my father knew in that moment is something that I didn't know, that I didn't realize, but I soon came to understand. You see, everything I needed, I had from the journey that I had from Spanish Harlem all the way through where I was at that point, I had everything I needed to not just survive, but to thrive in a corporate world that our family had never seen before, in a technology field that our family had never been in before. I had everything I needed, the values, the principles that made me me, as long as I knew to never, ever give up. Soon after, I started the corporate world, focused on the technology field, focused on trying to figure out ways to be able to make a difference, leveraging what I knew from a technology side, but also translating that over to the business side. I was focused on making sure I understood the business world. I understood how to solve the problems that the business world was going through in that moment. It was the Y2K time. It was those types of times. And what I realized as I was going through that journey were all the things that my parents had always told me were coming to be so much an important part of what made me me, what made me successful in that world, what makes all of us successful in what we do. You see, we have everything we need 
to make a difference as long as we understand the journeys that we've been on and how that journey translates over to impact and how we take the journey that we have as individuals and translate that over. And when I think about the journey that we have been on, that I have been on with my family all together and what we do and how it's translated over to what I do today. I wanna to take you a little bit more on that journey and how, how I grew up translates over to who I am today, but more importantly, again, how each of us as individuals have these superpowers that will translate over to us making an impact at a time in the world where we need to make an impact more than ever before. Never give up was the foundational principle that was out there. The second piece that my dad would always tell us and my mom would confirm and focus in giving us what we needed was the best perform their best under pressure. The best perform their best under pressure. So be the one that's out there where everybody else may be unsure about the ways and how to move forward, you see, but when the best perform their best under pressure, it means to be a leader at a time when others might not understand how to leverage who they are to move forward. But you see, when you take your journey and you translate that over and understand how you can be the best under pressure, it allows you to lead at a time when others may not be sure and maximize the group to do better as a whole. The next value that my dad focused on with us was you play to win the game. Now, it doesn't mean you play to win at all costs. It doesn't mean you cross a line to win. But what it means is if you are going to be in it, you play to win it. And you are out there giving your all. You are focused on making sure you are moving forward. It is okay if you lose, but you want to play to win the game. My mom was a big planner and, and still is and focused on making sure that we understood that we could only achieve our goals if we have a plan to get there. And my goal originally was focused on making sure I would be a corporate engineering lawyer of some type. And that's what took me over to Rutgers. But I'm not a lawyer today. You see, I focused on the technology side because I saw all the Latinos that were part of my community that were focused on the technology side. You see, it's important for all of you to make sure you are continuing to get out there to demonstrate what it means to be in the technology field as a lot, you know, what it means to be a leader in STEM, what it means to not just get into the field, but to excel in the field, to leverage your journey, to be able to be transformational. You see, because we need the innovation to be able to continue to transform what is happening out there more than ever before. A goal without a plan is a wish. So have your plan set. Next is if you're going to be there, be there. Making sure that you are giving your all, all the time. I am one of the shyest people that any of you will ever meet. I can promise you that. And if you are questioning, are you really that shy? It seems like you have no problem talking in front of folks. The way I asked my wife out was by literally throwing a letter at her and running by and hoping that she would read it. I was lucky. We've been married 20 years to this point and have a son and daughter, a son in college, a daughter in high school as a senior. If you're gonna be there, be there. The last two pieces that my journey has taught me is don't sweat the small stuff. My parents would talk about don't sweat the small stuff. It does not mean don't focus on the details. The details are important, but what it means is keep your eyes on the prize, make sure that you are making an impact in what you are doing. Do not let the little things knock you off course. And the last piece that the journey focused on was leave no doubt. Leave no doubt. Leave no doubt to your community. Leave no doubt to your family. But most importantly, leave no doubt to yourself that you did everything you could in this world to make a difference, to make an impact, to grow your knowledge, to grow your network, to take action, to allow for the impact that your journey has prepared you to make in this world to truly come to fruition. You see, these principles are what makes me me. And when I talk to folks about my journey, when I talk to you about my journey, I hope that you think about your journey and everything that it is about you that you can leverage to make a difference. Make a difference in the business world, make a difference in the social world, make a difference in your communities. 
it is all too important that we are focused on that right now. See, a lot of times when I get an opportunity to talk about where I grew up, oftentimes one of the first questions that comes out is, can I talk about why it was so hard growing up in Harlem? Why it was so hard to grow up in Harlem in the 80s, height of the crack epidemic. I was on public assistance, holes in shoes, no jeans till high school. Why was it so hard? And what I always like to talk about first is I will talk about why it was hard after I tell you why I'm a better person, why I'm a better business person, why I'm better in the boardroom, better in communities because of how I grew up, where I grew up, and my family. And I talk about all of my values and all the things that I learned growing up, how I grew up, and how that translates over to the impact that could be made today and how my 20 plus year career in the technology industry The strides that I made there were because of who I was and who I am based on my values. See, I bring my authentic self every day. At least I try to in the best that I can and I encourage everybody to do that. And I will tell you my view on what it means to bring your authentic self every single day on your journey. When people talk about be your authentic self, what I say is to be your authentic self means to stick to your values. You see, because I will continue to evolve as we will all continue to evolve every single day of our lives. We have to continue evolving. That's how we innovate. That's how we learn. That's how we grow. That's how we make the impact that we are trying to make every single day. We continue to evolve. But what's most important is that we don't change our values. You see, that is the core of our essence and our values as a Latino community are what make us so amazing. So every single day, I pray that I live a long, long time. And God willing, I will be able to talk to my grandkids and great grandkids about the impact that was made by the Latino community based on us leveraging our journey and skills, the seeds that were planted well before us that give us the opportunity to be able to speak up today leveraging all of who we are today to be able to translate that over to the impact that we can make as individuals, but more importantly, collectively as a community, socially, economically. So as we all go about the next few days together, remember those in the room set the direction that writes the history of where our country goes, where our communities go. And we are in the room together today. Yes, it is virtual. That does not stop the impact that we can have, the power that we have as a community to be able to continue to grow and make an impact. Remember, equity of opportunity is not the same as equity of responsibility. All of us have a responsibility to leverage our individual journeys, to be able to come together collectively, to be able to demonstrate the power of the Latino community and make a difference in the lives of the entire country. You see, the way that people talk about diversity translating over to innovation works is that you take all your experiences in life that you have personally, all the things that you've read, and you recombine those pieces and come up with these flashes of insight. The only way that works well is if we truly take who we are as individuals, take how we've grown up, take all those pieces and translate that over to make an impact. When I think about my career, starting off 20 years, technology focused, worked at Accenture, managing director there, focused on the energy industry. I think what's made me successful in my life, in my career has been I've embraced who I am at my core. A Latino person that is enjoys being passionate about things that helps others get passionate as well and takes everything that my community has given me to give me the strength to be able to give back 
You see, and now more than ever, we need to understand how the Latino community translates over to the impact that we not only can make, what we have done, what we need to continue to do, and what we will do going forward. The Latino community is the growth engine of this country. That is who we are not just because of how we've grown, but because of who we are. If you look at the GDP of the Latino community of the United States, if you remove the Latino community from that, we actually are going negative as a country. And so the Latinx community as a whole, we need to continue to do what we're doing to drive the growth. We are the growth engine. From a technology perspective, there is no group that is it, that is uh, embracing streaming technology more than us. There is no group. And so we have an opportunity from an entrepreneurship standpoint to continue to leverage who we are as entrepreneurial spirits, to be able to continue to grow and challenge where we should be going in a way that allows for everything to be better. One of the things that I, I tend to stay away from generalizations, because generalizations are generally wrong. You cannot group everybody as a monolith. But one generalization that I lean into is the Latinx community, us as a whole, we are insanely entrepreneurial. We figure things out. We will MacGyver anything. We will figure things out. Why? Because we've always had to. Twice as good to get half the credit. And we know we need to continue to make sure we are striving for greatness. We will come up with new things. One of the examples I love talking to people about is when I was a kid, my grandfather, um, mi abuelo, I, I gave him some papers. I was like, do we have a stapler? I need to staple these together. He was like, no. He took the papers, uh, took his sewing machine, sewed a staple in it. He was like, here you go, get off to school. Right, simple little example, but the ingenuity, the, the, the innovative spirit of let's just figure stuff out. And as I talk about all these things, I talk about all these pieces of my journey. I think about what it's done for me from a career standpoint, 20 years from a technology perspective, but I realized there's more. There is more that I want to do. I want to give back. And, and what happened uh, to really help me realize that was an unfortunate incident, more than just unfortunate. So you, I was walking to a client site and at the elevators, they have these TVs set up and, and, and I'm, I'm looking at one of the TVs and I'm like, that looks, that place looks familiar. And it was a building that had come down. And as I went in the elevator, I did a search on my phone, come out of the elevator, it's still cycling. And I go in to speak to uh, uh, the client that I had a meeting with. And as I come out, I see it says 116th street. 2014, it was a building collapse, a gas explosion at the church I went to growing up. And in that moment, I called my mom up and before I could even get any words out, she told me it was the church. There was a family member that, that passed away. I took some time off work. I um, was trying to figure out what to do. I remember talking to my parents saying, um, I, I gotta go and, and help. He said, well, what are you going to do? And I said, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I know I need to do something. I need to do something. And what I started realizing was as much as I thought I had been doing things up to that moment in my career within the community, I hadn't been doing enough. I didn't know how to help. And it took me down this journey where all of a sudden, where for 20 years, I had this career where I knew exactly what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go, how I wanted to do it. Uh, it made me start thinking again to that nine-year-old saying, have you ever wondered why you're here? And uh, I started reaching out to a lot of folks, started reaching out to people that were focused more on engaging in the Latino community and started asking more people, how do, I, how do I do more? How do I do more? And slowly that translated over to uh, the opportunity to take on this role with this uh, organization called Alpha, Association of Latino Professionals for America. And 
as I started talking to people about it, started questioning, am I ready for something like this to, to, to jump into the CEO role of the organization? What my parents helped me realize, what my wife helped me realize, what my kids helped me realize is, again, yes. Yes, I'm, I'm ready for that. And not only am I ready for that, it's a responsibility I have to give more. Going back to equity of opportunity is not the same as equity of responsibility. I had to make sure that I put things on hold that needed to be put on hold to be able to jump in at a time in our country where we needed people to jump in. And so I, I, I take you through this journey because I want you to think about your own journey. Starting off with this kid in Harlem that never imagined being able to be in front of all of you in this moment or any other, not realizing along the whole way, I was gaining the lessons that I needed to be able to give in a way that is unique to me, is unique to me. And I say that is unique to me because every single one of you all of us have learned things from our family, from our perspectives that are unique to you, that require you to be able to give in a way that translates over to more impact in a way that you feel that you left no doubt. And so as I talk about my journey from Harlem to being an engineering student, to being a corporate executive, to now focused on nonprofit and figuring out how do we find more ways to give back, I ask all of you to consider your journeys, to understand the seeds that were planted by those before you, generations before, all of our abuelos and abuelas, tios and titis, all of them that have done the things that have put you in the position that you are in today to be able to be fortunate enough to be part of this few days together. Equity of opportunity is not the same as equity of responsibility. What will you do with your gifts? What will you do with your journey? What will you do with the things that you have been given? And will you do the impossible things? Because that is what we need now more than ever. And it doesn't mean you have to put your careers on hold or put a stop to any particular thing. What it means is that you evaluate your journeys, understand your superpowers, and put them in position to be able to make a difference now. Because now is when we need it. See, the Latino community, in my view, we have amazing opportunities. We are everything. People will talk about the Latino community sometimes as if we are a monolith. We are not. We are all kinds of things. Whether you are from Colombia, Mexico, Puerto Rico, you know, Chile, El Salvador, wherever you are from, we are so many different things. And that is what makes us uniquely special. We are diversity within diversity. That translates to even more innovation. That is why we are so great at what we do and why we have a bigger responsibility to make sure we are giving of ourselves. And so I hope you enjoy the next few days together as part of this event. It is an amazing opportunity to be able to continue to grow your knowledge, expand your network so you can take action to achieve your aspirations while you are continuing to give back to the next generation. You see, we have a responsibility. And I thank you for giving me the opportunity to be able to share some of my journey with you all today. And I thank you for all that you are doing as individuals right now that creates a collective good and a collective movement that cannot be stopped. Thank you all. Enjoy the rest of the events. Take care.